yeah so I have to make a skink color a black and yellow body with a blue tail boy that's going to be interesting welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody i'm chris jones and uh thanks for tuning in to today's episode this is going to be a really cool custom order uh i have to replicate the um nasty nasty backyard skink um which i will admit they are pretty cool looking but they're creepy and they remind me of snakes and i pretty much find them repulsive um but I received a custom order this week to make a few different baits in a skink color. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. I, I said I've definitely got to do a video of the skink bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I guess the dryer's done. I'm going to take like a really thick black and a really thick yellow. And I think, I, I, I think I'm just going to swirl the bodies and do blue tails. Um, I have to do it in the creature bait i don't actually have a um i don't actually have a uh, i can't even i can't even think i don't have a lizard mold or anything like that but nevertheless we're gonna do the creatures um we're doing cinco's for him and trick worms so i think it's gonna be a pretty cool color this is um i, I guess a custom creations but it's a real order i think it's gonna look crazy and this is skink color okay so based on the pictures of the skink <laughs> can't even believe i'm saying that but i do agree this is a cool color um so props to the gentleman that is uh doing or uh, ordering these baits um i think this is going to be pretty unique so uh but based on the pictures it is a three color deal um so first things first we need the blue tails and that's going to be i've done split color baits before on here but you always shoot the tails first so we will leave it just like that I'm just gonna use uh, I think it's phthalo blue I don't know somebody taught me the correct pronunciation and then I've long forgotten um, so we're gonna do blue and then yellow and I'm gonna try the dead-on plastics yellow I have never tried it so I figured now is a good time I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that in there and, uh, and we'll see what we get. Yeah, it's looking like a nice rich yellow. And um, I want this to be pretty thick because I want them to really, since I'm gonna swirl these colors, I want, I want them to be thick enough to where they'll contrast instead of just blend and then create some sort of yucky black yellow hybrid. And um, that brings me to the black. Lure works black, doesn't get any better than that and we're really going to load it up okay so this is the fun part now we get to stir them in and see see what we're kind of looking like that is super duper thick let me uh, move the camera up a smidge face it down a smidge i don't know if that helps out or not but that is pretty thick um, that is looking really nice let's see yep black's looking good it usually does and same with the blue i love that blue color right there all right so that is what we we are looking at and i think we're going to get some neat effects um yeah so i'm going to go ahead and get the blue heated up first because we need to fill the tails i'm i'm going to do the cinco's last uh, because i have to alter that plastisol as you know um but in any event, we're going to do some grass grenades and some trick worms. So I'm um, going to go ahead and get the blue heated up. We'll shoot the tails and then we will uh, we'll do some swirling with the black and the yellow. And that should be pretty cool. And this is actually a little bit more than a cup of Plastisol. So we're going to do probably about, I don't know, just something random. Three, three and a half minutes. And, uh, and that should turn out fine. Um, again, today we're using Dead On Plastics. This is the Jerkbait blend, and uh, I'm pretty much in love with this stuff. Um, so check it out if you have not already. Um, and then uh, please do comment below. Let, let me know what your favorite Plastisol is. Um, I'm always just kind of looking for, um, for other people's 
insight and take on all of the products that we use. But I'm uh, going to go ahead and let this um, cook and then we will shoot some tails. So the more that I look at these skinks, they actually kind of have a little bit of red. Now that's just in the head, but the yellow isn't quite as bright as that. Um, so I might add a few drops of red um, just to kind of lessen the yellowness of it, if that makes any sense. Um, and, I, and I mean just a little bit, like one or two drops. And, um, but I'll do that after I cook it if I think it needs it, but that right there is what we're going for, or uh, those three colors. Okay, last minute, we're gonna add a little bit of pearl blue to not only brighten it, um, but also to make it pop a little more, to give it a little more um, visible character. I was looking at those, uh, you know, those skinks, they're kind of shiny, um, if you've ever seen one in person. So we're just gonna kind of jazz up that blue a little bit that will brighten it slightly, but it will also make it more visible uh, because it will have a sheen to it. And uh, yeah, that right there looks pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna fill some molds. Okay, so this mold is particularly tricky because of all of the appendages and primarily those right there, the ones that stick vertically. If you try to imagine trying to get the mold to shut on top of those exactly, um, you're really playing a game that you can't win. So I'm gonna remove those parts, okay? Again, these appendages come off and I'm going to snip the tails right there. All right. So I'm basically leaving in that, that portion of the bait and removing that portion of the bait. And this is a lot of work. I mean, split tails, especially on a complicated mold like this, are a lot of work. I mean, there's just no way to put it. And really, I can just tear this right there. And it essentially does the same thing, all right. And there's even these little outer arms to consider. So I have to snip those right there. Okay, got that done. I'm gonna tear that. And then I'm just gonna rip off the body. Okay, so basically I have to do that a bunch of times. <laughs> um, and you know, and, and what sucks is if you mess it up, you know, you, you, you kinda have to start it all over again and put these tails back in, but that's looking good right there. So now I can confidently close the mold on top of that. And that shut uh, on on every side really well you you'll be able to tell if it didn't shut you'll feel some some uh, squishiness to it so I'm gonna set that aside actually I'm gonna set it down that way so that it cannot become dislodged and now I have to do it to these um, I'm actually gonna withhold shooting the trick worms just yet with the tails because I want to see how um, I want to see how those turn out first um, before I go make a bunch of baits and cut out a bunch of blue tails just to find out that that looks like garbage um, I want to go ahead and try that first. So I'm going to shoot a few grass grenades um, and then we'll see uh, if we want to proceed. Okay, we are back with the cooked yellow and black colors. And the yellow looks good. However, you can tell it is not thick enough. Um, the black might actually be thick enough. Yeah, that's looking good. But either way, that one's not. Uh, I want them to be pretty even so we're gonna go ahead and dump a bunch more yellow in and we're just gonna really load it up beyond what we think and we'll see what we get there it's one of the good things about colorants uh, you can add them to the hot plastic and it doesn't mess them up that definitely thickened it but if I just look at the two knives here and, and obviously black is a thicker color it's darker you can see through to the silver knife. On this one, you cannot. Um, so I may need to add some Lure Works pigment. Um, some pigments, not knocking one pigment or another, but some are made to be more translucent. Some are made to be thicker. So we're gonna um, add some other yellow and I'll meet you back when we do. Okay, let's try this one on for size. This stuff is normally pretty thick, the stuff from Lure Works. Okay, so we'll really get some in there and uh, 
mix her up. This is also a little bit brighter shade yellow than that. That's um, that's uh, definitely not as bright yellow. Looking better already. We are starting to get the thickness that I want. We'll keep dumping it in here. Boy, I hope these turn out. I mean, that is just straight school bus yellow right there, folks. Okay. So let's get these stirred back up so that we can compare. We're getting closer. See what I mean? You see less of the knife up under that yellow. But I think we still need a touch more. So there we go. And we're going to do like one drop, one or two drops of red. Just to give it a little bit more of an orange tint like the uh, skinks had. <laughs> so we're going to, you know, the goal is to try to make it as um, authentic as possible. Yeah, there we go. That is just slightly oranger, as you can tell. Okay. All right. I think, I think I'm pretty comfortable with that. Okay, so we have both colors ready. We got the twin injector ready and the C-block, swirling block ready. And uh, we're gonna go to work here. And let's see what happens, everybody. Here we go. You, uh, you treat this thing just like you're doing laminates, just steady, slow, even pressure. And, uh, and we'll see what we get. All right, there's number two. And last but not least. Oh, got, got some trouble there. Yeah, I'm not sure about that third one. Uh, I, I must not have had the uh, blending block all the way down in the nozzle. So that middle mold may not have turned out. Okay, fingers crossed. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Never made anything like, hey, that is not half bad. Let's take a look. Oops. It's definitely a black and yellow swirl. Well, unfortunately, we had quite a bit of flashing on that um, middle mold, but only on the bottom bait. So I was able to salvage those two. And a little bit of flashing right there, but nothing that's going to inhibit the bait. And um, those actually turned out, oh, look at that. How cool is that? Just the way that, the way that that's patterned. So I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside. All right, and last but not least, the third mold came out great. I think these look pretty good. Drum roll. See what we get. These. Huh, now that's really interesting. Look at that sprue. Look at that sprue. All right, let's look at the actual worm. I'm not impressed, not impressed. There's not, it's almost like there's not enough um, contrast. Like the patterns are cool, but there's not enough contrast. I may have to do these as laminates. Okay, did we get anything better? Yes. It's at least a laminate. Check that out. Let's uh, take a closer. Huh. I actually got a kind of a swirl effect on that. That's a little strange. That's um, poor laminating, guys, is what that is. Poor laminating. I'm not sure what happened there. They were at really good temperatures, but that one looks pretty good. What, what do you guys think? Tell me what you think. I think that's actually a really cool concept, uh, this color. So yeah okay there are some of the other ones let's uh go get some grass grenades real quick yeah check that out that's not half bad i mean um you know this this is definitely the three colors that i needed um you know i i, I do think that the laminated worm now that's i wonder why i'm getting all these swirl effects you know the the temperatures were close but they were really hot so that could be it i um I probably should have let them cool down a little bit, but that's okay. Like, like I said, I didn't need to get exact results with these. Um, 
However, you know, there's always the issue of you want to you want to take pride in your abilities to laminate properly or do anything properly, but that's okay. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, you know, this isn't the definitive end product here. This is my first take on both of these. And uh, I just wanted to show you guys an interesting order that I got um, to literally try to match the color profile of a skink. Um, the guy fishes in the Washington DC area and um, uh, a reservoir up there by the name of Lake Anna, I think he said, and uh, he said that the bass just chew on chew on those little skinks all the time. So, I think that's pretty cool. Um, let me see about those sinkos. Yeah, there are some sinkos. I um, again, my temperatures weren't perfect, but that's okay tonight. Um, I, I got a few to laminate really well. Some are a little more. Hope you can see that random, which I kind of like the randomness. So uh, that's what the Cinco looks like right there. Yeah, there we go. That is what the order consists of. It's just several more of those, several more of those, and several more of those. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for tonight's episode. Hope you've enjoyed. Shoot me a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, I've never had to do any color like that, and I think it's pretty cool. Um, you know, I, the, just the whole skink thing I thought was, pretty, was really awesome. So... Uh, you never know what those fish are really feeding on in, in your home lake, I guess. But uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, shoot me some uh, color ideas for some more popular colors. And, uh, and let me know what you think. And we'll catch you next time on the world's worst fishing.